Before we introduce the concept of a finite automaton, we introduce the concept of a formal language. A formal language. And what's a formal language? Yeah. A formal language is just a set of strings. Uh, by the way, is it a finite set of strings or an infinite set of strings? Finite. Hmm? Finite. Uh, oh, what? Well, could be but infinite. We didn't say it so could be could finite. Could. We said that the string is a finite yeah. sequence of symbols from an alphabet, and we said that an alphabet is a finite set of symbols. So we said alphabet is finite set of symbols, we said that the string is a finite sequence of symbols from an alphabet. And we said that a, a language is a set of strings. We did not say we did not say that this the language should be uh, finite. In fact, infinite languages that have an infinite number of strings are more interesting. We will see that you know languages that have a finite number of strings are uh, are not that interesting or are easy. Uh, well, easy to recognize, as we will see later. So, what was the language example that we gave last time? We gave an example of a language L that consists of the strings W such that W starts with a 1. So, and what was our uh, alphabet? One zero. Yeah, so the alphabet was, uh, sigma was zero, one zero, or zero one. And we said that this is going to be our default alphabet. If we don't specify the alphabet, then this is our default alphabet because it's the simplest alphabet that, uh, uh, you know, that we can use to give uh, interesting examples. Okay? Uh, now, does this language have an infinite number of strings or a finite number of strings? Yeah, it has an infinite, infinite number of strings. All the strings that uh, start with one, and there is an infinite number of strings that start with one. And last time we gave this DFA, or deterministic finite automaton, for this language. So, if we start with one, we go to this state and when we get to that state you know if the string already starts with one the string has already satisfied the property of the language so after this we don't care what comes next so whether what comes after this one is a one or a zero we don't care so that's why the transition here whether we get a zero or a one the transition will we transition to the same state. And this state should be what kind of state? An accept Loop. state. An accept state, yeah. And we, uh, we mark an accept state with a uh, double circle. We add another circle to mark an accept state. So this is an accept state or a accept state or a, sometimes it's called what? Final. Yeah, final. Uh, okay, in fact, I like accept better. I think accept is, is more precise because final it may uh, 
may imply incorrectly that every string must end in that state, and it's not true. Yeah, as, uh, you know, the processing of a string ends in that state only if that string, only if that string is in the language. Yeah, only if that string belongs to the language. So if the string does not belong to the language, it's, it's going to end up in a different state. So now if we start with a zero, we go to a state like this. And now if we start with, if we start with a zero, then we know that this string does not satisfy the property of the language. So no matter what we get next, we're not going to get out of this state. So we'll stay there. Uh, okay. Now, and let's give them some names. So these are the states. Uh, now, before we give the names of the states, this is a deterministic finite automaton. What do we mean by a deterministic finite automaton? Why is this a deterministic finite automaton? Yeah. Uh, due to the fork in the road of the one and the zero from the initial state of Q0. Only because we have a fork? No, because the fork, you're making a decision. So you're making, you're determining if it's a one or a zero, and then it's kind of like a dichotomous key, and then you kind of branch from there. Okay, I can make it non-deterministic even with this fork. So who can make it non-deterministic even with this fork? With that, we, we still have one <coughs> zero. Can anyone make a change to this automaton to make it non-deterministic? Yes, in the back. Please. Add another number into the sigma set. In the one zero, add like another number, like uh, two. Okay, this is one way of doing it, yes. Uh, so if we add another number, like two to the alphabet, now we don't have, we don't have a transition for every symbol in the alphabet. So yeah, now it's, it's, it's not a deterministic finite automata. It's a non-deterministic, and non-deterministic finite automata will not be studied today. They will be studied, studied in a later lecture. But make it non-deterministic with the same algorithm. Yes? If you add a 1 to the 0 transition. So you want 0 or 1 would, would go to Q2 from Q0. OK, so if I do this. I meant the other one. Added one to the zero transition. OK. So you want to add one like this? Yeah. And do you want to keep this one? Or? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Now it's non-deterministic. Why? Now it's non-deterministic because if you get a one when you are in Q0, you have two possibilities. You have two transitions for one. You can either go this way or go this way. So in order for a finite automata to be deterministic, you have to have exactly one transition for each symbol in the alpha. So that's what deterministic means. So deterministic means deterministic finite automata means there is exactly one transition for each symbol in the alphabet uh, so yeah for each state so there is exactly one transition uh, out of each state <coughs> or, yeah, for each symbol or for every symbol in the alphabet. Okay. Now if we have anything besides one transition, like if we have two transitions, it's a, it's a non-deterministic. If we have no transition, then it's non-deterministic. So if I uh, you know, if I have a finite automaton like this, Q0, then I transition on a 1, and then I go to uh, another state, and out of this state I have, or well, here is 1, here is 0. 
This is non-deterministic. Why? It's non-deterministic because here <coughs> there is no transition for a zero. It's not telling you what will happen if you are in this state and there is a zero. Okay? So this is also non-deterministic. So if the number of transitions for any symbol in the alphabet is not exactly one, if it's zero or greater than one, then it's non-deterministic. Okay? And we will discuss non-deterministic finite automata in a later lecture. Okay, so now let's look at this deterministic finite automata. Uh, so we, as we said last time, we process each string, you know, character by character. Like if we have this character, 110, we start from the start state, and then we process one symbol at a time. So one, this transition diagram tells us that if we are in Q0 and we get a one, we go to Q1. So now our state is Q1. Then, if we get a 1, this tells us that if we get a 1, we stay in the same state, Q1. Then, we have to keep processing the whole string and see which state we end up in. We get a 0. This tells us that if, you, if we get a 0, we stay in Q1. So now we completed processing the string and the state that we end up with happened to be an accept state, so we accept the string. Okay. Now if you look at another string that starts with zero, it will take you here. Sorry, let's get rid of this. So it will take you to this Q2. Then whatever you get after the zero, it's not going to help. You'll get trapped in this trap state. So this is a trap state. A trap state, uh, how would you define a trap state? Has no yes. escape. It's like a dead end. It's a dead end, okay, uh, but how would you define it precisely? Yes, in the back. Uh, there's no way for it to get to the accept state. Yes, there is. It, this state itself is not an accept state, and it doesn't have any path out of it that leads to an accept state. So basically, there is no transition from that state to an accept state. There is no way to get from that state to an accept state. And of course, a trapped state cannot be an accept state. I mean, this is an accept state, but it's not a trapped state. So it's a, it's a non-accept state that if you reach it, you are stuck there. So there is no way to get to an accept state. Okay. Uh, any questions? So let's take another example. Uh, L is W such that W ends in a 1. And of course, we have the same segment. Ends in a 1. So now let's see. This is our start state. Now, if we have a 1, it should lead us to some state. OK. And should this be an accept state? Well, it should accept if this is the last one, right? So how do we make sure that this is the, you know, the last one? What, what, should we, uh, what should we do in order to make sure that if we get here, then this is the last one, or we accept only if the one that we got is the last one. Yeah. Maybe put the, uh, not the final, but the uh, final state marker, but the okay. accept state marker. Okay, so this is accept. Yeah. But how do we you know, make this accept only those strings that end in a one? Yes. If we uh, put a uh, fork from the accept state uh, with the uh, 
that goes into your reject state when uh, there's a zero that comes after uh, one. Okay, so do we need to create a third state or we can just go back to, uh, to Q0? Uh, by the way, uh, in, in, in many cases, in fact in all cases, you can do a finite state machine or a finite automaton in many different ways. And you can sometimes do it with more states than necessary. So, in fact, it, it would be okay if, uh, you know, at this point, if we use uh, more states than necessary, if we do not do it using the minimum number of states. Let me help you here. We can do it with two states only. We can do this thing with two states only. We can do it, of course, with three or four states, but that would be an unnecessary complication of this example. We can just do it with two states. Yeah. Can you loop it on the end state if it's a one, and then if it's a zero, go back to Q0? Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. So if I get a 1, I'm still good. The last thing that I have seen is a 1. Now, if I get a 0, I'm not good. So I'm, I have to go back to this, waiting for a 1. Okay. So now, uh, is this a DFA? Is what, what's on the board, is this a DFA? No. It's not deterministic. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have, what's missing? Zero. Four. Zero. 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 Yeah, so a transition for a zero from Q0. Mm -hmm. Where should that go? Zero. On itself. Yeah, why looping on itself not going to uh, Q1? Let's call this Q1. Why looping? Yeah, go ahead. Because you don't want it to go to the accept state because it's ending with a zero. Right. Yeah. yeah. So a zero is not accept. So we're waiting for a one. <coughs> so normally, you know, when we write DFAs, uh, it doesn't have to use the minimum number of uh, the minimum number of states. But this is so simple that it can be easily done using the minimum number of states. Uh, at some point, we will study an algorithm for minimizing a DFA, taking a DFA that possibly has redundant states and computing a DFA that uses an equivalent DFA that uses the minimum number of states. Now, of course, now I have used the term equivalent DFA. Can you define equivalent? What is equivalent in this context? Yeah, so DFA X and DFA, or DFA A and DFA V are equivalent if... Any string, I mean, the language is that each of them match are the same. Mm -hmm. The language is that? Each DFA matches are the same language. Okay, so you, you use the term matches. Let's use recognizes. So the, the, the term that we have defined is recognizing the language. We say that a DFA... Okay, so the term matches is, uh, I understand it, but I've never seen it in a theory of computation book. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, yeah, the, the, the right term is recognizes. A DFA recognizes. So uh, two DFAs are equivalent if they recognize the same language. Two DFAs are equivalent if they recognize the same language. Okay, now, so let's see how this works, because we're still in the beginning. So let's trace it. We will stop doing this one once we get to the idea of a DFA, we'll stop tracing uh, strings. Uh, but for now, because this is our second example, let's trace a couple of strings. So let's trace, <coughs> Um, zero, one, zero, one. Okay. So now, in the start state, we are, we are in the start state. We get a zero. The zero says, stay in the start state. What does that mean? It means that I haven't seen that one that I'm looking for yet. I'm looking for a one and I haven't seen that yet. Now, we get a one. So the one, with the one we transition to this, what does it mean? It means that the last symbol that I have seen so far is a one. So now there is a hole, okay, of 
you know, uh, satisfying the property of the language. So, so far, it was still good. If this happens to be the last symbol, then this string belongs to the language. But if something else happens, or a zero is, comes later, it may not be. So now we're in Q1. What's the third symbol? A zero. So where will the, the zero take us? It will take us back. Because basically we haven't made any progress towards satisfying the property of the language. Right? If zero takes us to square zero, or in this case, the zero state, the, 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 the start state. So uh, that one did not help because it wasn't the last one. So we are back to the start state. Then we get this one. So this one takes us to Q1. And it's the last symbol in the string, so we end up in an accept state, so we accept. And of course, if we have the symbol like, uh, you know, 110. 110, so the one will take us here. The second one will keep us in Q1. Then the zero is going to take us to this start state, which is not an accept state. Okay, so we reject. Okay, any questions on how DFAs work? So let's, it's a good idea sometimes to write a description of what each state means. So let's write this description here. Q0, well, in fact, Q1 is easier to describe. Q1 means the last symbol seen was a one. That's what state Q1 means. Now, what does state zero mean? So this is a, a tricky question. Say it again, so please. What what does? How would you describe Q zero? So we, if we say last symbol seen was a zero, that will not be precisely true. Why not? Because Q zero is the initial state. So what's, what would be the precise description of state Q0? <coughs> yes? Last symbol was not a 1. Last symbol was not a 1. No, this is not the right description because there may not have been any last symbol at all. So it wasn't a 1. It may have been, you know, maybe that nothing have been, has been seen. Right? So <coughs> when you say the last symbol, you are implying that there has been at least one symbol processed. Or no. But it could be that no symbol has been processed. So what's the precise description of Q0 now? No or zero. Yeah, so it's nothing has been seen yet. Or the last symbol seen was a zero. Okay? So no symbol has been seen. Or the last Symbol seen was a zero. Okay, so it's either no symbol has been seen or the last symbol seen was a, a, a zero. <coughs> okay, so you have to be, you know, careful and as precise as possible when you write any description of a uh, of a language in this book. So now, if I tell you, what if I, you know, flip the states? So I make this a, a regular state, and I make this an accept state. Now, what will the language recognized by this DFA be? So what would be the language recognized? Uh, with zero, zero at the end. I'm sorry, say that. Yeah. With yeah. zero as the end. Okay. And so you're not taking advantage yeah. of this. So this is, you know, we're accepting Q0, and Q0 means no symbol has been seen, or the last symbol seen was a zero. So then the description of the language recognized by this DFA is the language of those strings that. Uh, are either a null string, so the string that belongs to this language is either the null string or a string that ends with a zero. 
The non-string does not end with a zero because it doesn't have any symbols. So W such that W is either the empty string epsilon or a string that ends with a zero. Okay, so now we recognize the, the null string or any string that ends with a zero. Okay, so can everyone see this? So I got rid of this thing. <laughs> but uh, it looks like this line is not visible. Is it visible? Can people in the back see this line? Okay, so it says W is either the empty string, epsilon, or a string that ends with a zero. Um, and I will not write this, write this low. But isn't that actually that simple, actually saying that the string ends with an empty string? Isn't that what that simple means? Hmm? What's that? This is this the circle with, like that's crossed oh, out. This is a zero. Okay, let me. Explain. There we go. Okay. With a zero. No, 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 not the phi. Okay. Phi is a totally different concept. So that's phi, the empty set. Yeah. yeah. No, I did not mean to say phi, the empty set. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not what I meant. A zero. Oh, in fact, it's not uh, five. The camera did not capture that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any questions of what on what we have covered so far? Okay. Now, in addition to the this transition diagram, <coughs> we represent the uh, DFA using a transition table. So we can avoid confusion. Let me get rid of this. So let's do a transition table for this. Uh, OK, for this transition table. And the transition table is, is going to have in it uh, in the states, T0, T1, okay. and then what will happen if I get a 0 and what will happen if I get a 1. So in a transition table, there is a row for each, there is a row for each state, state and a column for each symbol, symbol in the alphabet. So there is a row for each state and a column for each symbol in the alphabet. Now in this case, if I'm in Q0 and I get a 0, this tells me stay in Q0. I'm writing the, sim the transition table for this simple DSA. If I, get, if I have a Q0 and I get a 1, I go to Q1. And if I'm in Q1 and I get a 0, I go to Q0. Q0. If I'm in Q1 and I get a, a 1, I go to Q1. So this is the transition table. Now, the transition table shows us how, how easy it will be to implement a DFA using a computer program. How easy it will be to uh, write a program that implements a DFA, a deterministic finite automaton. So in fact, uh, how can, you, how can you implement this? What, what will the implementation uh, of this look like? You know, what you are trying to determine is you are in a given state and you have a certain symbol, and based on that symbol, you transition to another state. Yeah. It almost looks like a logic table, or like a truth table, so you can make uh, a... No, it's not going to be a truth table. Well, a, a, a truth table is not well, something that okay. you program. You know, programming-wise, now, even though, you know, we said that this course is, is going to emphasize theory, not programming, but let's, for a, a couple of minutes, think of this uh, from programming point of view. 
how would you program this? What will the program for this uh, look like? And? Yeah. yeah, well, it's, yeah. It's in, in fact, you know, you, you can have a, a switch statement on the state. So a switch of, on the current state. And then for each state, there is a switch on <coughs> a switch statement on the symbol. So you can say, uh, you know, state, and then a switch on if it's state or, you know, case Q0. Or you can do, you know, you can do a, another switch or you can do if else. You can do if 0 go to uh, uh, Q0, else go to Q1, mm -hmm. case Q1, uh, if 0, go to uh, Q0, <coughs> else go to yeah, right anyway, so this is just to show you that uh, a deterministic finite automaton will be easy to program, unlike a non-deterministic finite automaton. Because in a non-deterministic finite automaton, some of these may be missing. Some of these transitions may be missing. Then what should you do? Okay. And of course, we will uh, we'll answer this question later. Or sometimes, <coughs> you know, this could be either <coughs> missing or what? Yeah, have, have multiple states. Yeah. So this can either be missing or it can have a set of states rather than a single state. And that's why uh, you know, it, uh, an NFA is not, uh, not that easy to implement. I keep uh, forgetting about this order. About this line. Okay, so let's take another example. So we can do this. Here. What about this language? L W such that W uh, uh, contains or has an even number of ones. W such that W has an even number of ones. Now in this case, we would like to do a DFA for this language. Now how many states do you think we will need today? Before we start drawing anything. How many states will we need to determine if a, if a string has an even number of ones or an odd number of ones? How many states? Three. 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 <laughs> Uh, well, I think I would say two. Because, uh, uh, you know, the number of ones in a string is either odd or even. We don't have a third um, 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 possibility. Um. So you need a state just to represent an even number of ones and a state for an odd number of ones. And that's all what you need. Zero Remember that you can go back and forth, right? You don't have to create a new state for everything. You can go back to an old state. So. Since all what we are trying to, the property that we are looking at is whether the number of ones in a given string is odd or even, and there are only two possibilities, so all what we need is two states. So this is our start state Q0. And this is our uh, state Q1. Now which one should be an accept state? Q0. Q0 should be an accept state. By the way, 0 is an even number. So remember this. 0 is an even number. 0 is an even number. So the empty string has an even number of ones because it has 0 ones. 0 is an even number. So Okay, so what should I do now? Uh, of course, this is not complete yet. So if I get a 1, I transition to Q1. If I get a 0, <laughs> yeah, <coughs> exactly. So just 0, just Q. Q1 loop. And what does Q1 do if there is a 0? Loop. Loop, because, why? Because it just means that 
Seeing a zero doesn't change the state. No, I'm only counting the ones. Seeing a zero does not change the state. Because the property that I'm trying to recognize is the number of ones, and I don't care about the number of zeros. Therefore, a zero will not cause any transition. Okay, now what will the one do? We'll take you back to, it's either odd or even. So this one takes you to odd, and this one takes you to even. So in this case, Q0 is uh, an even number, or an even number of ones. ones. Uh, have been seen and Q1 is an odd number. Okay, so one state for even and one state for odd, yes. Uh, for Q0, shouldn't the uh, definition for be even number of ones have been seen or no ones have been seen? Okay, well, because we're saying that a zero is an even number, right? So you don't have to, uh, if you add it, it would be redundant mm -hmm. because uh, you're given that zero is an even number. So we're saying an even number, the even number can be zero. Okay. Okay, so you can add it, uh, it will be clearer, and you will make it more explicit, but it will be redundant in this case. Mm -hmm. Yes? But the language might also be filled with empty strings, right? The same way the, the, yeah. the language That'd be zero. Will be filled with empty strings. Well, the empty string belongs to this language, yeah. because the empty string has an even number of ones. Because he defines so zero. So the question is, does the empty string belong to this language? The answer is yes. Seen. The empty string does belong to this language. Okay. Uh, okay. Any any other questions? Okay. So what about this? So now we have been you know, writing languages and trying to figure out the, uh, the DFA for a language. But what if I give you a DFA and then ask you to identify the language? So what's the language for this? L is W such that W has at least one, one. And the last one follow I the last one is, uh, is followed by an even number of uh, Okay, 